What are the things you think a person needs to sort out for or about themselves before they can be in a healthy relationship? And then we got the second one that's quite long and we think is quite similar. So I'm going to read that out too and we're going to answer them both. If you have mental health issues that mean, da- that mean dating you will involve a lot of emotional labour for your partner, should you date or should you stay celibate? At least until you have all of your issues fixed. If you want to date, how do you be open about your issues as early as possible without scaring away any potential partners? I'm coming from the point of view of a cishet male anarcho-feminist that doesn't want to seduce another anarcho-babe into a relationship that involves a fuck-ton of unpaid, heartbreaking emotional labour. I guess it kind of applies to anybody with a lot of baggage and privilege. How do you have a relationship when you know that your baggage will likely hurt your partner without it being an exploitative, toxic, patriarchal... question mark? If we can't be healthy, should we be celibate? When is the right time to bring up your issues when dating? I don't want to wave my big red flags too early, but always want to be open and honest with partners and make sure any consent they give is true informed consent. How do I make like Beyonce and be crazy in love? Pow. Beautifully wow. phrased as well. Yes. Love that Beyonce and, line. Yes, and even the fact that you are, you know, self aware enough to even know that that's an issue and 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 mm-hmm. ask, that's huge. I'm gonna whip out my notebook as I usually <sighs> do a little bit. I don't really have many notes on this. But um first of all, I will just say <laughs> I I am mesmerized that that's actually a thing because the the boy that late most lately rejected me <laughs> was basically like it's not you, it's me. I just need to sort myself out. And I really, really thought that that's just a polite way to reject me. Which it probably was. Which it probably was. Kudos to him. But, like, I, I'm mesmerized that actually someone thinks that way. Like, that's amazing to me. Because I really thought that he was just like... Well, maybe he did it anyways. But he was like, look, I'm not in the best place, like, in terms of my mental health. I don't think I should do this to you. And so, yeah, we're we're not a thing as such and I really was like oh that's really nice you're just not into me I'm not that the thing is people probably both say it when it's true and when they want to let you down easy like like I'm sure I've used it for both like so for, yeah so in a way it was very reassuring again next time you know I don't know it's just kind of nice to think that perhaps it was true <laughs> that it wasn't just me <laughs> I don't know probably it was okay so I have a lot of thoughts about this because I have been both people I have been the person who was emotionally involved with someone who had a lot of mental health issues and I found it very, very difficult and also emotionally draining whilst wanting to be empathetic and caring and supportive. And I have been the person who, in retrospect, definitely partly drove my ex-girlfriend away by every time she texted me, how are you doing, Rowan? I would be like, terrible. Everything's shit. I'm so depressed. My life is awful. And understandably, she wasn't so into that. And so, like, at the time, I thought that I was brilliant and perfect and charming. And I was. But I was also definitely negative and all of those things. So basically, I completely... And I didn't understand that at the time. I only understood that after. So I completely relate to not wanting to be like, hey, charming stranger, here's my baggage. But I also, in the the first example I used... Sorry, I'm flip-flopping... I was kind of, I don't know, seduced by a persona of mental health that it turned out was just a facade and that was very damaging for me and probably also for the other person when it eventually collapsed. So just a little technical thing. Go Mike. Where, oh god, where's it gone? Oh there it is. Sorry. Okay, so it's okay, yeah? Yeah, it was just Wait, buried. Okay, sorry, but that's fine. Um, um <laughs> Yeah, no, so I mean again, um so I wonder, because obviously there are the sort of relationships where someone will enrich you and, you know, you'll meet them and actually you will get better. You know, um, there's been so many times as well that we've been in the pits and then we met someone and they brought us back. And you, because and we did, it didn't necessarily felt like labor, you know, like from their point of view, because they were so in love or, or, you know, or so, I don't know, just really believed in that person. So and then obviously there's the other scale, you know, where obviously... Um, you would just be asking too much. So basically, I don't necessarily think that there's not a person out there that even with all of your baggage, you wouldn't make them happy. But okay, so to break this down, I think, in terms of the first question, because it was a bit snappier, and I think we'll, with the second one, we'll maybe go yeah. question by question. Um, when should you not be with someone? You shouldn't be with someone if you don't feel empathy to them, if you don't, if you don't necessarily, if you can't put your 
yourself in their in their shoes if you can't be supportive of them really if you're supportive even if you go like look i'm a bit in my own space i can't do this right now but as long as you're supportive of them and what they're doing i think that's okay i mean i just think you know it's not necessarily about basically you as such but as long as they kind of feel like they're supported and then you sort of you know obviously hopefully with their help begin to sort the stuff out uh, but as long as they're supporting whatever they're individually doing so that their full-time job doesn't just become caring for you or whatnot but that they have their own thing that is fulfilling them as well and that you know the other parts of their life or whatnot is is to help you but you have to be extremely I suppose supportive of whatever it is that they're doing apart from you because caring for you might become a very very fundamental part of their lives right but if there's a way to to make sure that that person that you are not the only you know, not the only thing that that person is doing and that you encourage that but then would you also say on the flip side one of the things that you should sort out before dating someone say is having something of your own so that you don't end up making that person your thing so in a way yes i completely agree but i suppose sometimes people are in such a dark place where they can't even have their own thing Mm. you know what i mean like they're literally i don't know they don't go out out, go out of bed or like they're not in you know they don't have like a job or education or like some sort of project or whatnot and in that in that really really dark place i suppose that's the only thing you can do is support the other person but obviously i mean we would somewhat recommend not recommend i don't know if there's a way for you to find something that you love and begin to nurture that into a further project, whatever that may be, whether that is, you know, not necessarily like money bringing or education bringing, but something perhaps that could be evolutionized into a certain... Because this is my question, because I want a relationship the most when I've got nothing when I'm at the bottomest and I just want someone to like care for me and to be my thing that I do and yet I know that I'm my not goodest self when I'm in that state so it's like it's kind of a chicken or egg thing right yeah which is I mean that's what I found in my current situation definitely is that the two came along at the same time right Mm -hmm. but I don't know if I hadn't had one if the other would have felt good and vice versa but at the same time it's not necessarily fair to start a relationship with someone as to make them your thing that is worth be doing stuff for does that yes no I, I agree that they can't... probably it is not a healthy place to start a relationship where you think that they will be the only thing that will make you happy right that's a very succinct way of what i was trying to say yeah no no <laughs> but like but that's yeah it is very difficult because, of course, you know, to be fair, sometimes that is the only thing that will make you happy. Yeah. Right? You just want to be hugged and kissed and loved and, like, whatever it is that you... And you could be doing a million other things. You could be doing all these projects and all these, like, jobs and all that stuff and still be depressed as fuck. Mm. And then that is the only thing that will make you happy, But right? I feel like other agony aunts would say, like... Yeah, you need to sort your, you shouldn't rely on someone else to give you your happiness. And while I think that's true, I find it much easier to find my own happiness when I'm with someone. And I just do, you know, and it's like, I don't, yeah, I don't know. And yet, even if I have been in like really, really long term awesome relationships, the happiest I've been with them was when I had my own thing. Yeah, as well. exactly. Mm. Yeah, so it's, yeah. We apologize for the squeaky. Chair. Yeah, I, it's, it's mine. I don't know what to do about it. No, I don't think it's, it's mine as well. Sorry, guys. We hope it's not irritating too much. I guess we need to... Yeah, just mine as well. Anyways. <laughs> should we go through those questions okay. individually? Because I think, like, again, there's a lot there. We do want to unpack it. Wait, from the first one, is there anything else you would say that someone needs to have sorted before they start a relationship? I mean, I think capitalists would say, like, you know, an income or whatever, but... <laughs> So this is complicated, right? Like, I think that's extremely dependent on, 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 on one state, right? I mean, I would say... Like, I'm at a point in my life where, yes, certain things, like, particular way of looking after yourself or, like, probably certain, like, conditions. Yeah, like, that's important to me. But, like, that's, I know that I'm peddling the stereotypical sort of normy way of looking at things. I'm just, I'm just personally at that particular point in my life. But also subjective what, like, ambition or income or whatever means. So it's okay. Like, yeah. 100%. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, this is a sort sort of very... London centric urban answer, I think, you know, to some, yeah, I mean, again, for people that just want to live in the countryside and that's all the thing, but that's also, you know, that's their thing and that's fine. Yeah. I think as long as someone has passion for something, right? Right. So you'd say an individual passion, 
other things you would need in order to start dating. Well, yeah, personal hygiene. Is personal but hygiene. Again, but some people are into that as well. So That's well, true. That is our Absolutely. subjective thing, Absolutely. is that we subjectively like hygiene. <laughs> Sorry. No, but I would say empathy for me and support for support for for, yeah, that's for, nice. my, for me. Maybe that like, for yeah. my own ambition as such. That's personally. And as a kind of, it's an abstract question, but I would say, I want that you want a rela- to be in a relationship with me, not just that you want to be in a relationship. Yeah. Because, yeah, if you're yeah, like, exactly. I'm gonna tick off this list and then I can be in a relationship. That's one thing. But if you're just being in a relationship with the first person that says. Me, you know. Yeah, yeah. Be picky as well. I mean, as yeah. much as you can be as such, for sure. But having said all of this, I think about, you know, the person that rejected me as such. Like, um, she didn't necessarily have those things. Like, he wouldn't have probably supported me like that. So it's probably a good, a good, yeah, he was probably for a good reason that was like, look, I can't do this right now. Yeah. And he didn't, which is actually amazing. So maybe he's actually the goodie in this story. Ah, (laughs) (laughs) all right okay now let's go through the the long one question the longer one obviously we've covered a lot of it already but like i think like there are individual little bits there that we can still okay so part one if you have mental health issues that mean dating you will involve a lot of emotional labor for your partner should you date or should you stay celibate I think going settle a bit is a bit... That also sends a message that people with mental health issues can't be in relationships. Yes, which is not... No. no. So, no, no, you don't. But there are ways of doing it, which I guess comes to the next part, which is, if you want to date, how do you be open about your issues as early as possible without scaring away potential partners? I've been fairly lucky in that, that people have told me straight away and I was enamored with them so much that I just did a lot of my own Google research, basically. And I went to farms about certain conditions and learned about it a lot myself, which was actually extremely eye-opening because sometimes you hear of a diagnosis, you know, and it's just like, oh shit, you know, it's the scariest thing ever, you know. But obviously, as as, as well as if we could perhaps already send them certain resources, because you probably have researched them yourself, you know. In my case, it was ADHD, you know, and... Uh, and uh, and and it was yeah I was just very very keen to learn about and learn different ways of how can an individual sort of deal with that and that was uh, yeah absolutely kind of fascinating. This is interesting because I actually did exactly the same thing um, with someone. I like I googled yeah like what does it mean if someone you love has depression? Like how does someone with depression relate to their friends, relate to their family? Like what how can you support this person? And also how can you make sure that you're not like supporting them to detriment of your own health and I did a lot of this online research as well so and there's some incredible Facebook groups as well yeah. that like literally can chat to people on that so I mean honestly like en- like revealing anything important in a relationship it comes down to how much you trust the person and like that's not something we can really tell you yeah I, I wouldn't I wouldn't bring it up on a first date and you know to you it might be you might be terrified to reveal that stuff to that person they might be terrified to reveal I don't know, like the hairy nipples, or yeah, or which on which we will talk about in the future. <laughs> but, but like with anyone I've actually really, really cared for, be it a romantic relationship or otherwise, finding out that stuff didn't make me like them less. It made me want to find out more about what that meant for them and what that would mean for me. And so it wasn't it wasn't a red flag per se. It was a thing of okay, I really like you, and I'm invested in this relationship of whatever kind, and therefore I'm going to figure out what this means for us. Yeah, like don't see it as a red flag necessarily. And if you're aware. Like, yeah, don't bring it up on a first date. Weird. But, like, once you trust that person as much as... And only you can tell that, then mentioning it as a thing and then them being like, okay, what does this mean? And talk about how your mental illness manifests, what it might look like. What what does a bad day look like for you? Yeah. How do you want people to support you when you're having a bad day? How do you want people to treat you when you're having a good day? Because if you have particular triggers or things that piss you off or forms of, like... Uh, sympathy that make you annoyed or ones that you really like just let that person know absolutely yeah like basically the coping mechanisms that you've already assembled you know uh be like look so this is the sort of this is the situation i hope we can work with this we'll work with this together as much as we can be this is what worked for me in the past i know yeah this is gonna be tough but like i will also cherish you you know yeah and yeah, I mean, as long as I guess you're not abusive, I mean, that's that is also a th- that is a thin line. That is, that sometimes that's what I was happen. about to say because, like, your mental illness is not an excuse for you to be abusive to your partner. Yeah. Like, yeah. but what you can do is say, sometimes I, I don't know, fly into these rages and it's not about you, and I'm sorry if I do. And then they can say, you are not allowed to fly into a rage with me if you feel that it's coming on, follow these steps. And you can come up with a process together of how, like, for example, I used to have anger issues, like, quite bad anger issues. 
And I used to, um, if I got really, really intense, just leave the room during a fight with my partner. I just stormed out and burst into tears. And he told me, this is my uh, ex-partner, he said, I really, for my own personal reasons, don't like it, can't handle it when someone storms out of a room, like just leave the room during an argument. And I was like, but I need you, I need my own space. I can't be in a space anymore. I'm going to end up like throwing the hot sauce against the wall. That happens at one time. It's fine. I dealt with it. It was a mess. A horse. Hot sauce. Hot sauce. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I know I'm from the countryside, but... <laughs> and so basically we came up with a system together where if I knew that I was in that state where I needed to leave the room, I just had to say, I need to leave the room right now, I'm sorry. And like, and so even if I was in this weird, hot, like stressed, angry place where all I could do was say, I need to leave the room right now, and then walk out, that was okay for him because that was me doing my best to communicate that thing to him and to acknowledge that he didn't like the alternative. And so like it's... And so you don't know yet what your partner is going to be okay with and not okay with. And so it is going to be every single time figuring those things out together. Yeah. And maybe coming up with certain reward system as well. You know, well, that's regular. You know, you know, once a month, that is the day where I'm, like, rewarding that person and whatnot, you know. I mean, obviously, this is tricky because you shouldn't have to feel like, you know, you have to pay the price for whatever it is that you're going through, you know, in, 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 in your mental health. But, um, no, but being thankful for supportive people in your life is important. Yeah. Like, yeah. Okay, should we go through that further? Um, okay. I feel like every sentence we're already like, but you know, but that's what we have for. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, the next one is not a sentence. I guess it applies to anyone with a lot of baggage and privilege. How do you have a relationship when you know that your baggage will likely hurt your partner without it being an ex explosive, toxic, or patriarchal? Well, patriarchal, I mean, so as long as you're, I mean, not like does your mental health like negatively exhibit in misogyny because yeah. if that's the case that's probably misogyny not mental health yes and or you know seeing a a, 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 a psychotherapist for that would probably be a few stories yeah probably. i mean i'm hoping yeah 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 but um, maybe that was just put in as like a if we can't be healthy should we be celibate i would say no no i would say definitely no cause... if you can't have a relationship without taking out all of your issues on your partner then i would take some time to yourself to learn strategies to not do that yes but it seems like you would probably do that with your friends then as well right so just don't do... that's actually a really good point because i think sometimes we unload on our partners in a way that we don't on our friends like our friends see our good side our nice side our happy side and they they therefore have no idea how like the partner is treated when they see your bad side, your at-home side, you're exhausted from work, your I can't be bothered to perform uh, health anymore side. And that's not an okay thing to do. Your partner isn't your... Like punching... Yeah. Bag. Unconditional love shouldn't exist, basically. No. The condition has to be bare minimum decency and respect. And if you're assuming that someone has unconditional love for you because they said they love you and they said they'd be there for you, that's not an excuse to take out anything on someone. Yeah, so I suppose, you know, as, uh, the, you don't have to be celibate unless, you know, I, uh, you, your mental health issues are surrounded around the points where you are deliberately disrespectful to, to someone, right? Yeah. And if you, like, notice that you start justifying your bad behaviours in a certain way, then, like, talking, obviously, like, talking to a therapist or whatever is, like, a given, but that's important. I have seen those relationships from a side, you know, where someone is very, very snappy at their partner, you know, and then, but then they do give them a lot of gifts or something. And now it probably sounds a little bit like that's what we recommend it, but that's, I still, you know, like I see that from the side, I don't say anything, but it's, well, I mean, I have, I have, yeah. I do, but yeah, that is, you can see that's not going to, that's not going to go anywhere and actually... Yeah, that's not, that's not okay. And the thing I'm just scared of is that, like, for example, I, until quite recently, I probably still do, but it hasn't manifested. Like, I had a saviour complex in the sense that I, w there were certain people I met that had mental health issues that I felt a connection with. And I felt that, like, I was the one that understood them and I was the one that could save them. Oh, yeah, yeah, And, yeah. That I, and like, through, <laughs> through being, through being, like, intimate with me in whatever way we could change their life they'll and better. they'll get better and so therefore I could take this flack and take this stuff because I was part of this process of healing them and it it fucking exhausted me for a very long time it was incredibly bad for my mental health my physical health like all kinds of things because I was desperate to save this person and that's also on me like it's on them for being not that great <laughs> but it's also on me for having taken up this role that actually I didn't have the capacity to fulfill 
and for trying to make them into this person that they want. Like they, yeah. that they, they, I wanted them to look at me and think Rowan is my savior, and they didn't think that. And that, like that, that was I never asked them yeah. that, but I wanted that. Yeah. And so there's that as well. Like make sure your partner is supporting you, not to the detriment of their own health, and not because they have a misguided idea of. Yeah. What's going to happen from it? Again, from my reading, a lot about well, again, this was in this case was ADHD, but uh, I've read a bit on Asperger's, as Asperger's, Asperger. Mm. Um, is that the the, the of the partners? I mean, I mean, that was really, really awesome, encouraging. They're like, oh, we've been together for like forty years, and all the time when I see like what partner, you know, I don't know if they're having a fit or something, you probably just go like, oh, is it is it is this like a, a mental illness thing, or or or, or like. You know, they're just super forgetful and haven't done a certain thing to go. Is this an ADHD thing? You know, like and so basically, or they like take the mic as well. They find ways to laugh about it, which is really nice. Mm. And not just the the partner, the two of them together. You know, so yeah, basically, there's lots of hope. Although we're kind of describing a lot of like kind of somewhat negative scenarios. You know, people stay together for decades and yeah. extremely happy, and it's fine. And when people find the one, and both of them, you can tell that both of them are working on a certain on this issue. There's not just the one or the other working on it. Then it's absolutely fine. Yeah. Yeah, it's just about coming up with systems that work for you and your partner. There yeah. isn't a one size fits all on this. Yeah, like... but that, you have to stay very disciplined. With yeah, those. yeah, and definitely. Check, literally, even if it involves at nine thirty, I'm checking every day on nine thirty. I am checking as to how I did at those particular points, or even I was like, yeah, seven p.m. I write down what went well today and what didn't. Like literally, even it has to be as as disciplined as that. I think it's worth it. Yeah. What are your triggers? What are your partner's triggers? What yeah, and for you what works for you? Every night, be like, okay, so today, what worked in terms of like the mental health stuff? You know, what didn't? Um, I get why this can work. yeah, I, and I get why this can be daunting when like on you know on the lookout for a new partner because yeah, you of course you don't want to have like second date at the cinema. By the way, here are my triggers, but yeah, I think it's something that you open up to. Like I don't know, like for me, like the more dates I have, the more I open up about things that are emotionally hard for me in a general sense. And if one of the things that's emotionally hard for you is a mental illness, then that will hopefully naturally fall into the conversation at some point and you'll be able to see how they relate to that yeah. already. They might have their own experiences, like we've just shown our own experiences that they can engage with. And if they are immediately like, I can't handle that, then you know straight away. Yeah. But don't lie. Don't make it seem like it's less hard than it is if you have certain things that are really difficult to handle in your own personality and you recognize them don't minimize them and talk like be open about how they how they look because yeah that's the only way place someone can, so, ugh, the only way someone can have proper consent to a situation yeah yeah is there anything when's the right time to bring up your issues when dating i guess i just did that yeah yeah yeah, yeah. okay how do i make like the and be crazy in love who are we? <laughs> I don't know, but um, I mean, yeah, it can be really hot. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, <laughs> be open, be honest. Trust that, like, when you like that, you know when to open up to someone. I'm not saying it'll always work. I've had people in my life who I've opened up to, and it turned out they weren't there for me. And also, I'm sure it's happened to other people. But there's also yeah. been times that I've told people about my own mental illness problems, and they've been super there for me. And it's made our relationship incredibly strong. So yeah, have some humor about it. You know, like, yeah. I mean. You're great in this and this and this and this way, but something's gone a bit funny. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, and like, you know, I, mean, I don't know. I used to be a stand up comedian and uh, we did a comedy set about depression. Um, and it went terribly. Like, it didn't work at all. The audience did not like it. It turns out they're not interested in making jokes about someone else's depression. But for us, it was very cathartic. So, you know, there, yeah, making light of it for your own benefit can also be a good thing. Yes. I'm looking that I should be hunching, hunching less. So oh, God. I'm it. probably also, like, I think it's these chairs. Oh, it's like, because it's squeaking. Sorry about the squeaking. Yeah, sorry about the squeaking. It's going to get better.